how many ways can we rearrange the letters in a word? And sometimes it's called the Mississippi problem. How many ways can you rearrange the word Mississippi? That's typically the uh, go-to problem in a textbook uh, in the United States. But, uh, you know, pause the video, see if you can figure out Mississippi. But we're going to start with some smaller ones to begin with. And, you know, how would you tackle the problem? Maybe that's why you're here. It's because you don't know. So here we go. Start with one that's a lot simpler. We'll start with my name, Dan, a three-letter word. And we'll rearrange it um, all the different times. We'll, the first method is brute force. Mississippi would be tough to do brute force. And what I mean by brute force is we just uh, list them all out. So, um, you know, Dan, there's one way. Uh, you could go DNA. DNA. So there's where the, the D is in the, in the front. Then we could put the A in the front. And so it would be A-D-N. And that should be an uppercase because I'm using uppercase. Or uh, A-N-D. Uh, or we could put the N in the front. So now the N's in the front. And so N-A-D. That should be a D. Or N-D-A. And that exhausts our list. So that's all six of them. And that would just be solving it brute force. If we can just list them all out, there they are. We know there's six. So, but let's look at it at, in terms of fundamental counting and maybe a tree diagram also. So with the fundamental counting theorem, uh, and I encourage you to go look at a video or two of that uh, with fundamental counting theorem. But what I like to do is I like to put everything in bins. And there's three letters, and we have to use all the letters, so we have three bins. In the first bin, we could put three, uh, three letters. It could be a D, it could be an A, or it could be an N. Which leaves, so if we pick one of those letters, that means for the second bin, there's only two. And for the third bin, there's only one. And so the fundamental counting theorem would be three times two times one, or six. Uh, you know, and what that is, when you multiply the numbers starting from the largest, from, from the number and then going down and multiplying them all out, that's called a factorial. And so we often in mathematics represent it as three with an exclamation point. So factorial. Okay. And so that's looking at it in bins. So now let's look at it in, um, in a tree diagram. In a tree diagram, we would have three choices to begin with. We could either have a D, an A, or an N. Okay, then once we choose a choice, then we can have two more choices. So uh, we could have an A or an N here. And then after we choose that, we only have one choice. So if we chose D and A, then N's the only one left. And if we want D and N, then A is the only one left. And then the same with A. So A, uh, you could either have a D or an N. And then once you pick that, there's only one left, which would be an N here and a D here. And the same with N. We could either have A or D. And then it would be uh, D here. And then we only have uh, an A left for here. And if you count each of these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of like brute force, but that just shows you another method of looking at it, and some people just need that. Uh, so there's six ways. So we've kind of beat this problem to death. There's three different ways of solving it. Um, those are some, some skills you can put in your toolbox if you've never seen those before, and they work great for a lot of different counting, counting problems. So let's ramp it up. What about the word walk? So now we have a four-letter word. And I like the fundamental counting theorem. That's kind of my favorite. I like to look at these in terms of bins. And so there's one, two, three, four bins. Uh, walk has four letters. And so we'd know on the first letter, uh, first bin, there could be four choices. We could put a W, an A, an L, or a K there. Once we choose one, now there's only three left to choose. Once, Because we, we're not repeating any of these letters, it's going to remain a four-letter word then two, and then one. And so that would be four factorial, or four times three times two 
times 1. Or 4 times 3 is 12 times 2, which is 24. So walk, you could, if you had to do it brute force, you could write out 20, you'd have to write out 24 different words for the word walk, W-A-L-K. All right, let's, let's go to the next level. All right, so what about the word cool? Now here is another four letter word like walk. And so you might think immediately that, uh, that we have, you know, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. So another four factorial uh, number, which is 24, four times three times two times one because we have four letters in cool. The problem with that is the letter O occurs twice. And so, and we can't distinguish between, from one O to the other O. And so we're, this 24 is way too high because we've got some repeaters happening. And so let me give you a, what this looks like. So I have it conveniently, I color coded them. And I just did a couple of them because I don't want to list out 24 of them. But, but if you look at these first two here, that would be if we colored one of the O's red and the other one blue. You know, if you're colorblind, I'm sorry, we'd have to put in different shapes or something, but, or maybe they're just slightly shaded different for you. Um, but we've got, we've got two choices for, for that if we can change the O's somehow. Well, they're indistinguishable. So this second one, is the same as the first one, so we'd have to divide it out. And each one, if you look, see if we put the CL in front, we'd also have two. So we're gonna have to divide by the two ways to rearrange that O. And so it's not just 24, it's, it's uh, 24 divided by two, which is 12. Because we're gonna cross out all of the all of the repeating O's. So there's only 12 here. And, and then I'll, I'll show you on the next one too. It gets, it, we'll make it, we'll make a non-word and make it kind of interesting. So let's look at a slightly different word. You know, how, this is not a word, cool, with too many O's. But how many ways can you rearrange the word cool? And again, um, now we've got five letters you know, you've got the three O's and the C and the L. So we have five whole letters. The problem with this is, again, the O's are indistinguishable. So you might think it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five bends, and five times four times three times two times one. Um, you might think it would work the same way, which is five factorial, but we're going to have to divide out by all the different ways that we could rearrange those three O's, because those three O's, again, are indistinguishable. And so let's take a look at that. I just didn't want to list them all out because there'd be a bunch of them. But there I listed out two orientations. I listed out if we put the L here and the L in front and switched them. And if here they're indistinguishable, but this shows you all the different ways, if the O's were three different colors and it mattered, how, the diff how many different ways we could rearrange those. And if you noticed, um, there's six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six ways to rearrange three things in a line. And, uh, and that's kind of the same fundamental counting theorem idea. Uh, three times two times one. Three times two times one gives you six. So we have to divide each of these by six. And so if we go back to our problem then, whoops, wrong one. If we go back to our problem then, five factorial would be divided by three factorial for the three ways to, to or the six ways to rearrange cool. So so just kind of doing the work here, five times four times three times two times one divided by three times two times one. Well, one divided by one is one, two divided by two is one, three divided by three is one. And so we're left with just five times four, which is 20 ways. So this strange word 
cool has 20 ways that you could rearrange it authentically without uh, with the O's being indecipherable. All right, so we're about done here. We're ready for Mississippi, I think. So back to where we began with Mississippi. Maybe now you can figure this out. I mean, pause it if, you're, if, if you think you got it. But if you look at this, there are 11 letters in Mississippi. So if we counted that, that would be 11 factorial bends. However, um, if you notice, there are four S's. So there are four ways to rearrange the S's. So we would divide out those four different S's that are the same. Uh, we've got four I's that are indistinguishable. So we'll have to divide out by the I's. And we have two P's. So there's two ways to represent those P's. So our final answer would be this, which would be 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. And that would be um, 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 2, 1. And obviously the ones you can eliminate uh, and ignore, but I like to put them in there. And so then uh, we can start crossing stuff out. And I'll change colors here. And so 2 and 2 crosses out. Uh, 2 and 4 would cross out, leaving a 2 there. 3 and 3 cross out. Um, 4 and 8 would cross out, leaving a 2 there. Um, a 4 would cross out with this 2 and this 2, because that's 4 divided by 4. Uh, 2 and 6 leaves a 3 there. And then 3 and 3 cross out. And so you're left with um, 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, not, nope, we crossed 8 out, times 7 times 5. And so you get your calculator out and you type that thing in. And I think we would have, and let's, I'm pretty sure this is right, uh, but you can sure double check me, 34,000. Uh, 650 ways to rearrange the word Mississippi. So 34,650 ways to rearrange this particular word. And I think a quick Google search also finds that. I, uh, but if you're wanting an explanation, that's the best I can do. Hope this helps. See you next time. Ask me a question. I'm sure I'll be able to get around and answer it for you. Thanks a bunch.